up until now, we've been looking at uh, the basics of programming. So we've studied variables, we've studied functions, we've studied recursion, the mechanism for looping over data. Um, today, we're going to start talking about Canvas, which is an element that allows you to render uh, various things on the screen. But before we do that, we need to talk about the DOM. And what do I mean by this? So, have a look at this HTML. Hang on, let me zoom in a bit. Okay, so at the top you have your HTML, then your head, style, and so on. Oh, jungle. Is there anything here you don't understand? No. If you don't, raise your hand and ask. Okay. Yes. What? What is light gray? It's a color. It's light and it's gray. <laughs> Other questions? This has various ways of selecting elements. Some are by class, which is by point, right? By element or by ID, which means hash, right? Which uses hash. Point is class. So you see here, there's a class called puppy. So this would select this, right? And give it a width of 200 pixels. And the result of rendering this is something like that. Right? I know, super cute. Okay. Okay. So all of this, I think, makes sense to most of you, right? Now, let's actually look at how this stuff is rendered underneath. If we inspect, now, generally, you guys have been looking at console, right? This is where you've been printing console.log results. But if you look at element, and we click on the puppy, you can see that the puppy element, oh, let me zoom in, wait. Wait, let me zoom a bit more. You can see that the HTML has a structure. It's almost like what I wrote. There's an HTML, there's a head, there's a body. Inside the body, we have a div. Inside the div, we have an H1, a P, and an image, which has a class of puppy, and this picture, which when I mouse over, it shows me a preview of the picture, right? So you can see it kind of looks like a tree, doesn't it, right? Every element seems to have things underneath it, right? So this H1 is underneath this div. This div is underneath this body. You guys notice this sort of tree structure? Okay. This structure, you can reference that. That means you have access to that from your JavaScript. Let me show you how that works. So in your JavaScript, so again, to add script, of course, you just create script tags. And then here, you can either write script directly, or of course, you can reference your external file using the SRC attribute. We all know this. So let's actually start writing code. There's a, a variable called document that already exists for you. If you're writing code inside of a browser, you have access to document. It's in a global scope. Document has various functions attached to it, such as get element by ID. If, it's, if we have this, what is inside of document? What is document? <coughs> it's an object, exactly which has this key attached to it, which then has a value of a function. <clears throat> Make sense? Okay. So then, what do you think is the argument for something like get element by ID? <laughs> the ID of the element that you want. Fair. Okay, so let's get, the, get a reference to this div. So let's write as a string the ID of that div, which is container. Oh, let's get rid of that L. And let's store that into a variable, const container. Okay, now if I did something like container.innerHTML, that is to say the stuff, the HTML that is inside, I want to put h1, yay, h, h1, boom, boom, pop. Whoa. You guys see that? Yeah, I killed the puppy. Okay, look, everything is there, right? But then what I do is I change the content, the stuff that is inside of that container, 
to be H1 gay. And in fact, if you inspect the HTML, you can see that in fact, inside of this container, inside of this div, this one here, I've made the stuff inside, the HTML inside, be H1 yay, which is how we got this. Is that clear? Yes? Uh, how you can not replace the head? Yeah, you can append the child, but we'll get to that later. There are other functions you can use to do things like removing a specific element to attach a specific element, and so on. Yes. Uh, there's actually a lot to this. So another thing we can do is we can watch this. Let's, so remember it's a tree structure. And a, in a tree structure, every parent has children, right? It's a tree. So container has children. I wonder how many children it has. Let me alert container.children.length. It has three children. See? Three. Why? Well, let's look. Let's inspect the element again. Look, this is the div. It has an H1, it has a P, and it has an image. Three children. Makes sense. Um, so children is this interesting structure that has a length attached to it. Okay, interesting. So let me, instead of length, do index of one. And let me set the inner HTML of that to, okay, look what happened. Yes. Think about it. We have three things under container. This, this, and the puppy, right? Index of one means which one? The second one, because it's zero, one, then two, right? If I did index of zero, hello puppy would swap, and I would get okay. Make sense? If I don't do this, of course, the original remains. Cool. So you can see with this that with JavaScript and the ability to reference documents, you can begin to change what you see on the page. Right? You can manipulate the document. Okay? The other thing is you can add events to the DOM. This is going to be cool. Watch this. Let me add, um, oh, I know. Let's still change this to OK, but only when I mouse over the puppy. Mm -hmm. OK, watch. So first, we need a reference to the puppy. There are a few ways I can do this. I can do container.children, and then take, which one is the puppy? The second, the third one, so index of two, right? So I could do this, and I can say const uh, const puppy. I could also well, I could also give the puppy an ID and do document dot get element by ID puppy, right? Okay. So now this is the puppy. Now I want to add an event listener. What do I mean by an event listener? An event listener is basically a function that is called when an event happens. Okay, makes sense. So let's do that. So let me call up this up for a moment. So let's do puppy.add event listener. What is add event listener, by the way? It's a function. That's right. Okay, here we give the name of the event we want. Why don't we do click? And here we do we specify a function that will get called when that happens. Make sense? So whenever a click event is ha happens on the puppy, this function will be called. And now let's do, let's change this to OK. And now let's click on the puppy. You see it? Let's do it again. I'm going to click on the puppy. Ready? 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 Yes. OK. OK, so what we can do is do OK. So you can add some logic here to check if the inner HTML is equal to OK, and if so, flip it to something else. So that way you can get a toggle effect. Every time you click, it says OK, like hello, bye, hello, bye, hello, bye. That's just logic up to you. Yes. Can we call the function like a recursive, maybe 
calm itself again? You can, you can, if you want, make an internal function here, which you can then call in order to cause recursion. I don't know why you would want recursion, but if you wanted it, you could do it. Okay. If okay, listen. If you just set the inner HTML to like okay by okay by okay by, all you would see is by. Because the code runs so fast, and you're actually blocking the thread, but don't worry about that. Just imagine you're running your code so fast. In the end, all you're going to see is the last thing. So you're going to need a delay in between, which we'll get to when we get to animation, which we will do at the end of the class. Yes? Very good. So we need a different event. We need a mouse enter event. So now, watch this. I move the mouse in. Boom. Now we can add another event. Yeah, we have key presses, of course. Mouse leave. Mouth there, leave. Okay. Bye. <laughs> cool, right? This is not recursion. This is not recursion. Yes. Okay, look. I I do imagine this, guys. Look. I want to know when a student stands up. Okay? I go to the other room, and I ask you guys, hey, if a student stands up, come tell me. This is exactly that. This is the event you're listening to, what you want to know about. You want to know when mouse leap happens to this, to puppy, right? So on the puppy, you're saying whenever the mouse enters you, sorry, whenever the mouse leaves you, in this case, call this function. That's it. And whenever that happens, this function is called. Whenever this happens, this function is called. By the way, I can, add, I can do it more than one time. Look. What happened? You can add as many event listeners as you want. You don't have to just add one. Fair? So I might say, whenever someone, a student stands up, tells me, someone else can come and say, whenever a student stands up, tells me, you can add as many of these as you want. And this curly brace in the end? What curly brace in the end? Ah, I know. Fuck's head, you know. By the way, are you guys seeing why I spent so much time on functions? It's all functions. It's, we're going to be using functions like crazy. OK. All right, good. So hopefully this gives you some idea that you can manipulate the DOM. That is to say, you can change what it looks like. You can add event listeners to the DOM, so you can know when something changes, or when a key is pressed, or when the mouse is clicked, or whatever. And in this way, you can actually begin to build some really interesting stuff. Questions up until now? OK, key press, event, event can't wait, what? No, 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 something's wrong. Ah, yes, 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 yes. It's a reference function E. And then here we need to check if, because E has the key that we want inside. I just need to see where, ah, key code. Here we go. E dot key code is 88. If e dot key code is equal to and then whatever some value which we'll get figure out later then alert yay okay now we have to figure out what is that key code what is 88 you press w okay so let's run this now and if i press w no 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 this should work okay the reason why let me explain the reason why it doesn't work is because I'm running inside of an iframe. What is an iframe? Um, OK, it's not the entire app. You see that? It's like an app inside of my bigger app. And that kind of screws things up. If you guys were to do this on a separate. Uh, it's possible. 
I need to somehow bring this into focus. The problem is, is I've attached the event listener to this, but right now I'm in a window outside of it. What's this possible? Huh? If you do this, not like this, but in an actual separate file, the way you're supposed to, it will work. Okay. So anyway, the point is, you can add event listeners of different kinds. One of it can be key, one of them can be uh, mouse events, like mouse enter, mouse leave, click, mouse down, mouse up, mouse move. That's how they do drag and drop, by the way. You can do mouse down. Remember that it's down. Mouse move means it's dragging, so you just drag the thing that they did mouse down on. That's how you can do drag and drop. I'm not going to quiz you on this, don't worry, but I want you to understand that the DOM is this rich structure that you can manipulate and you can add event listeners to. Questions up until this point? Or should we keep, yes? Does the get element by the working class as well? No, you have to get get element by cla class name, I think it's called. Wait. Get elements, get elements by class name. That one. That one. Uh, good, good question. Other questions? That's it? Okay, now that you understand the basics of the DOM, let's actually talk about the canvas. What is a canvas? Okay, so in HTML we have elements, right? There is an element called canvas. It's just an element, no different than any of the other elements that you've seen. And you can think of Canvas as a piece of paper. Think of it like a piece of paper. And you can draw on this piece of paper. Now, to be able to draw on this piece of paper, you need a pencil. Right? How, you need something to draw on the piece of paper. So look what we do. Can, we make a Canvas. We give it an ID. So far, no different than any other element, right? We can give it a width and a height, just so it has some, the paper has some width and height. And that's it, that's all we do here. I think this is fairly straightforward. Here we do document.getElementById, and then we give the ID that we gave here. So we get a reference to our canvas. Up until here, does anyone have any questions? Okay. Now that we have our canvas, our piece of paper, we need a pen. We need something to draw on it with. To do that, we ask the canvas to give us what's known as context. When we call get context, get context is a function, of course, we give it a parameter. In this case, we give 2D. Why do you think we ask for 2D? Two-dimensional. So we need tools, pencils, pens, tools, that know how to draw things in two dimensions. We might potentially ask for a 3D context, which would have the tools, the utilities, to draw in three dimensions. So in this class, we're just going to do two dimensions, so we're asking for 2D. No, I don't think so. I've never seen anything more. Okay, so we have this context that has attached to it all the functions that we need to, run, to draw things in two dimensions. One such function is called fillRect. What do you think fillRect does? It draws a rectangle. Where does it draw the rectangle? The canvas from which we got the context. Look, this is the canvas. We do canvas.getContext and we get this. So now any, th any function we call on this will draw on that. Make sense? OK. So fill rect, it takes a bunch of numbers. What do you suppose those numbers might be? <laughs> yeah, if I told you, hey, here's a piece of paper, draw a rectangle, you'd be like, what? 
Where? Okay, so I would need to give you maybe an x and y. Behold your x, behold your y. I would also need to give you maybe a size, right? A width and a height. Here's your width, here's your height. The other thing you might ask is, well, what color? You want me to fill the rectangle, right? Well, what color should I fill it in? Fill, spile, and you give it any color you want. Whee! Okay, let's, let's get rid of this for a moment. And let's play with our uh, canvas. So instead of 50 by 50, let's have it 50 by 100. Sorry, that's a top. There we go. So that's width and height, right? So if we want the height to be smaller, want the width to be larger, width to be smaller, I think you get the idea. We can change the position. Instead of 10, we can make it 15. Boop, it moves. 20. Boop, it moves. 25. Boop, it moves. Right? I know. OK, remember when I was drawing things on the board? This is like the machine version of that. OK, cool. So fill rect will fill a rectangle, right? But suppose you just wanted to draw the perimeter of the rectangle, just the border. The frame, exactly, of the rectangle. This is known as a stroke. Okay, so if you want to draw a stroke, you don't do fill rect, you say stroke rect. Okay, so let me get rid of this one. And stroke, st stroke rect has its corresponding stroke rect function, right, which has a x, y, width and height, and stroke style, which in this case is green. I can change it to be red. And now it's red. I can change the position. Instead of being 110, I can be 10 and 10. No, yes? Uh, no, you have to just do stroke rect and then do stroke width, but do it in the same position. And then you will get this and this. It's awesome. So look, let's do this. Wait, 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 so let's watch. 10, 10, 50 by 50. There you go. Now, oh, uh, question. No, there's no, this isn't DOM. There's no Z index. The Z index is the order in which you draw. Think of it this way. If I give you a pencil, and you drew a house, and then you drew a sun. But you drew the sun on the house. The sun would be on the house. If you want the sun to be behind the house, you draw the sun, then you draw the house. So the order, the Z index, if you will, the order in which they come, is the order in which you draw them. For example, let me do another fill rect. Okay, so you see how they, they're on top of each other a little bit? The red one came second, so it took most of the room. If I move it up, it's the other way around. Make sense? Yes? Yes. If you don't specify style before, look, when you want to draw something, right? You want to know the pen to use, the color to use to draw it, right? Imagine drawing and then I tell you the color. You understand how that's weird, right? So you say, here's the color, and then go, and it draws that color. Make sense? So in this case, for example, I'm saying the color to use is red, draw it. The color to use is green, draw it. Yes, wait, go. If you don't mention the green color, Exactly. You will get this. Yep. Uh, go. Relative. Say that one more time. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Okay
Other questions? Yes. If we stroke a rectangle, how does it decide what the borders are? Ah, uh, there's a line line width, I think it's called. Hang on. Uh, good question. One second. There is a context of line width. Um, Can you make, well, you have access to, so, so far I've only been telling you color names. You can also specify uh, RGB and hex, yes. which basically gives you access to everything. Can we do RGBA? Uh, I, oh, good question. Can you do RGBA in Canvas? I don't know. Uh-huh, so, uh, Miracle, Holzer, Ring. Europa. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have a good idea. Well, let's transparency in Shadat's name. Okay, that's what he asked. Um, how do you change transparency? Wait. Okay, wait. Canvas transparency. RGBA on top of that? Ah, too. Okay, you do RGBA. Alright, so here you can do. Slash chair? Okay, so RGB means red, green, and blue, and it takes colors between 0 and 255. So let's do 100, whatever, 150, 20, and A is 0.2. There you go. Oh, nice. Thank you for all the RGBA people. Um, this is opacity, by the way, the last one. So it goes from, so one is completely non-opaque, non zero is like completely transparent, and everything in between is everything in between. So if you want it less opaque, you do, there you go. Okay? Yes? Fill try. No, there's no fill try. No. Uh, we'll get to shapes later. Okay, other questions up until this point? You guys understand what fill rect does? Yes. Also, do you notice that the coordinate system is flipped? The Y grows downward. Do you remember this? This is important. So look, if I make the Y, the 10, if I increase that, look, it goes down. Right? Zero is at the very top. Okay, that's the only trick here. Everything else is just basic coordinate system math. You know this. Move on? Okay. Yeah. No. No. All that, like, it, you can't do CSS on your canvas. You just draw what you want. If you want padding, draw it this way. A little bit. Ask a question. Okay. Are we good? Keep going? Yes. Good. Okay, now, remember last time when we, oh, it wasn't last time, one of the classes, when we had this idea of a game, and the game had like characters and bullets, and we were iterating over each bullet and drawing it on the board, remember this? So before we get there, let's have a very simple case. Let's say we have a point. It's an object, which has some information about it. I want to draw, I, the point is on this coordinate, this width, this height, and this color. I want to now draw that on the screen. Look what I do. I create, everyone can read the code? Okay. I create a function, draw. I call the function later. And all it does is it does fill style, but it gets the style, the color, from the point, from my data. Notice it does point.color, and it gets red. Right? Okay. So if I change this to green, 
I would get green. Then it does a fill rect and it does points.x to get the x value, point.y to get the y value, which would be 10 again, point.width and point.height. In other words, I have data here and I have a rendering function here that knows how to take that data and put it on the screen. Simple, yes? And if the data changes, if I make the data something else, things will change. Yes? What if your object gets out of your canvas? You, you, mean, you mean if you draw outside the bounds of the canvas? Yeah, like your canvas is defined by something. Else. Yeah, yeah, watch. So he's saying, instead of, what if we, this was that? That's what you're asking? Yeah, that. <laughs> it's like drawing outside of the paper. You don't see it. Like, it doesn't. Yeah. Actually, in reality, it's actually not there. Because it checks and it doesn't do anything. That was another question? Yes? Can we change the color of the background? Yeah, of course. So the, ba the background color itself, you can do it in two ways. You can either just draw a big rectangle of whatever color you want, or because canvas is an element, you can use CSS to do background color, whatever you want. And if you want to draw a box, then write something. Ah. So you see this context? I told you that this context has a function attached to it called fill rect. I told you that that context had a function attached to it called uh, stroke rect. Now your question is, what about drawing images and text and all these other things, right? What do you think I'm going to do? <laughs> Look, can, uh, what is it? Canvas, 2D, context. Go. Canvas rendering context 2D. Let's see what this says when it loads. The internet here sucks. OK. Um, fill rect, we know this. We've seen this one, right? Clear rect, interesting. I wonder what that does. Sets all pixels in a rectangle defined by starting point x and y, size, width, and height to transparent. Fill rect, we know that. Stroke rect, we know that. You can draw text. This was your question. Look, you can do fill text. And you just give it an x or y. You can just click on it. Oh, sorry, wait. There you go. Fill text, here's an example. You give it a text and an x and a y. Position. And it will render it. And it says what each one of these is. Look, x is the position, y is the position. You can also. The maximum width to draw. If specified, the string is computed to be wider than this width, the, the font is adjusted. Ah, so that it adjusts the font to fit the width. Blah, blah, blah. And some examples, look, you can even specify the font. And the, look, you just copy that, paste it into your code, and yeah. Can I really just attach the text to the... You don't, yeah, I know what you're saying. You don't attach to it, though. Remember, it's not the DOM. You just draw. You draw a rectangle, then you draw text inside. So Look, if you want them to text in the same way? Then it's, you, it's your job. So if you want to move them, you have to move this and this. Makes sense, right? Yes? Clear rect. I'll, I'll show you in one second, but it's clear rect. Which is like just like drawing a rectangle, but it's like, okay, we'll get to that. Okay. For this example, is there anything that is not clear? Uh, what happened? Oh, wait, we're drawing on... Good. Okay, help me turn this into a red box that is 100 width and 50 height. This one. Go, 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 tell me. Uh-huh. Okay. Cool. Okay, nice. How do I get this box to the top left corner? Nice. Okay. 
Question. How do I get this box to the top right section? I'll give you a hint. The width of the canvas is canvas.width. Huh? We can use float right. No, you can't do float right because it's not an element. Okay, I just did canvas.width. Why is it not visible? Because the X and Y is here and then it draws this way. So I need to shift it back, right? By how much? Oh, sorry, there's a scroll bar. There's a scroll bar. Sorry, sorry, there's a scroll bar. Here, let me make the width smaller. Wait, wait, wait. Let me make this. Okay, good. Now it's here. Uh, let me give the canvas some style. Wait, wait. Object property inside object. Yes, you can use an object inside an object. One moment. Um, so let's do hashtag canvas. <laughs> let's give it a border of solid, one pixel, red, green, whatever. Okay, there it is. There's my canvas. And you can see it's on the top left. If I do zero, zero, it will be on the top. How do I make it on the bottom right? How do I put it here? Okay, so. Nice. Now, how do I shift it this way? Bottom right. Boom. Okay. It's making sense? Okay, so if I asked you how do I put it in the middle, you would know? Yeah. Right, you have everything, yeah. Okay, good. Good, good, good. So, let's keep going. Now, I don't have one point, I have an array of points. So I have a point here, a point there, and a point there. And the colors, let's say, are red, blue, and orange. What do you think this will draw? Okay, so this one will draw at 0, 50. Okay, so the x is 0, the so y is 50, and then it draws a 50 by 50. Okay, it draws this. Right? But question, so what I need to do, how do we actually draw this? We have a list, right, an array. We have to iterate over the entire array, and how do we do that? How do we loop over an array? How do you loop over anything? Our good friend recursion. Okay, so let's create a function called, you know, const draw. And we'll call it later, which will take an array. Wait, 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 we'll get there. I know, this is the actual answer. Okay, which takes an array, and it's going to loop over every array every item in the array, and then we're going to draw each item on the screen. I'll say this one more time. We have an array of points. For every point, we want to draw on the screen. So loop, draw, loop, draw, loop, draw. Yes? Okay. So we, how do we iterate over an array? And with recursion. We need, remember, when you walk through an array, you're looking at its index, right? Index 0, index 1, index 2, and you keep doing this until you're done. So we need some function to pass an index, and then have a termination case to stop it. Yes? Okay. So, uh, let's create a function called helper. 
What is the termination case? When the index reaches where? Minus one? And then we helper index plus one. That's it. This is our record. Now, we want to actually do something. We don't just want to loop. We want to actually do something useful. So let's actually draw the value that we have at this index. So const point um, index. What will this give me? The value at that index. So the first time it loops, it will give me this. Second time it loops, it will give me this. Third time it loops, it will give me this. Four time it loops, it will go out, and that's it. Make sense? OK. So we have this point. We want to draw the information of this point on the screen. How do we do that? I want to draw a rectangle. What do I do? OK, I want to draw this point. What does this point have? Well, it has an x, a y, a width, a height, and a color. So let's do point.x, point.y, point.width, and point.height. And let's just call this draw with the array of points. And what happens? Look carefully. Exactly, helper is never called. And we get this beautiful black box. Why? Right, because we keep just doing fill rect, fill rect, fill rect. And if I just told you draw a rectangle and I didn't tell you the color, you would probably need some default color, right? Turns out the default color here is black, which is why you get black. So let's change that. So let's do context.fill style and let's give it point.color. And we get that. Cool, right? Now, doing recursion every time you want to iterate over an array can become very strenuous. It can add a lot of code to your project. And you don't want to do this every time. So, why don't we help ourselves? Let's write a function that will do the recursion for us, but keep it separate from all our other code so we don't have to keep writing it. Remember, the whole point of writing functions is so that you can put code that you can reuse, right? So why don't we create a helper function that we give an array and a function, and it will call that function for every value in that array. Yeah, exactly. For those of you who listen to for each, yeah. But let's actually implement it for each. So here's what this looks like. Look. For each, we have an array and a function. We want to call this function for every value inside of array. I'll say it again. You want to call this function for every value that is inside of this list. Help me. Anyone? Well, we need an index to iterate over, right? OK, when do we stop iterating? OK, and then the, what's the recursive case? OK, this, if I just did this, um, this will just loop over the array. It won't do anything. It will just loop, right? So here, let's actually call the function that was given to us with the value at this index. Have a look at this function carefully. Because once you have this function, you never have to write recursion for an array again. Why? Because if I want to do this, instead of doing all of this complicated stuff, all I have to do is take this code here, remove all of this. Here, let's just have draw be a function like that. 
comp uh, for each pass in points and the function we want to execute for each point. And what do we want to do for each point? Well, we want to do this. You see how we're coded? Now you never have to write this again. You can use this anytime just by giving it an array and a function. And the function will be called for every value inside of that array. So if we add more points here, let's add more points. And let's have this be, I don't know, instead of 100, let's have this be 150. We got that. What kind of, it's an awesome flag is what it is. What kind of flag? So you guys see how just by, once you write your code, just by manipulating the data, the code will then do its job and put it on the screen. Remember, this is how multiplayer gaming is played. I send you the data, your rendering engine just draws what I sent you. You send me your data, my rendering function draws what I sent it. And in this way, we see the same thing. Cool? Okay. So we all understand what for each is and how it works. Let's copy it and use it in other places too. So this for each is the rendering function. Uh, no, the for each doesn't render. This is the rendering function. It uses for each just to loop. Fine? Good? Keep going? We'll come back to this. Okay, next one. Is animation. Okay, wait. Okay, before we look at all of this stuff, let's do something very simple. Really? Okay, let's make a point. In fact, let's make a bullet. Yeah, it's a bullet. No, let's make it a ball. Yeah, whatever. It's cuter. Okay, let's have let's give it an X of let's say zero. Y of 0, width of, say, 50, and a height of 50. Uh, I'm just going to use fill rect everywhere for now, but if you want to know how to draw circles and lines and all these things, just go look at the API, copy, paste, and you're done. Okay, now we want to draw the ball on the screen. How do I draw, how do I draw a rectangle at this coordinates again? Uh-huh. Which one? Okay, so let's give it a nice color. Ivory. I wonder if there's a pink. Yeah, right, pink. No, pink is hard. You can see pink? Okay. All right, good. So. What I want to do is I want this box to move. Okay, so I could maybe do this, ball.x, you know, plus equals, or, plus, or equals, ball.x plus 10. And then do it again. Huh. Wait, let me do that again. Okay, one problem that you see right away, think about what this code does, right? It draws a rectangle, then it draws a rectangle, then it draws a rectangle. If you were to draw this on a piece of paper, that's what you would get, right? You would draw a rectangle, then you would draw a rectangle. Well, you're drawing on top of each other, but a little bit to the right. Yes? Okay, so what we want to do is every time we draw a rectangle, we want to erase the previous one. Right? Okay, there's a function called uh, clear rect. It's exactly like fill rect. It takes the same parameters, x, y, width, and height, but it clears everything in that region. It's like, it's like erasing everything in that region. So let's do that. So after that, let's do context.clear.rect. 
clear, correct? And let's clear the whole thing. Let's do zero, zero, canvas.width, canvas.height, and let's do that there, and let's do that there. Okay, better. Uh, notice something. It's not, there's no animation, right? You're just right away saying, draw, clear, draw, clear, draw, clear, draw, draw, draw. And then it goes, okay. <laughs> you want to know the region you want to clear. You don't always want to clear the entire thing. Sometimes you want to clear just one part. Yeah? Okay, so you understand the problem with this, right? Is right away you're saying draw, 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 clear, draw, clear, draw, clear, draw, clear, draw, and then it's saying, okay, draw. So what we need is some delay, some wait time between each one of these things, right? We want to draw, then wait, then draw, then wait, then draw, then wait, in order to get that animation. Make sense? There is a function called request, request animation frame. It's a function which takes as an argument a function. Hang on. Uh, there we go. That was exciting. What just happened? Here, let me console log this. did a single high and that was it. Okay, so let's put a, something here. Okay, it just drew it and that's it. Right? So what does request animation frame do? It says the next time you want to repaint the screen, call my function so I can tell you this additional stuff to draw. Right? The screen is constantly getting repainted. Right? There are frames, frames per second. What you're saying is the next time it's going to repaint, call my function so I can tell you what to draw. And then it draws it. So I tell it all the information to draw, and it puts it on the screen. The next time, it if I want to request animation frame again, hang on. I can do uh... Notice you see a little bit of an animation? Do you see it jumping? It does this and it does that. Okay, let me do it again. this a bit. Do you notice a little bit of a jumpy animation? Okay, now yes, you're right. If I cleared here, then it would show me a box going, right? So let's do that. So let's do uh, context.clear, correct. Zero, zero, canvas.width, canvas.height. And let's do that every time. So let's do it there, and let's do it there. You see it kind of jumping? Okay. Now, I've only done it three times, right? We want to do it much more than that. So we need some sort of a looping thing. Recursion. Good. All right. Uh, so let's create a function called loop. I want this function to run when the request animation. F wait, hang on. Request animation frame loop. What do you think is happening after I call loop? 
Can anyone see what's happening? I call this function. It then requests the animation frame with itself. You actually don't, don't worry about the stop for now. It, it then calls loop, which then requests animation frame, calls loop, requests animation frame, calls loop, requests animation frame, calls loop. Yes? From here, let's create, let's create another function called draw that we will call at each iteration. In draw, let's actually draw the point. So let's do um, context.fill rect point.x, point.y, point.width, and point.height. Hang on. Context.fill rect point.x, point.y, point. That's right. Uh, loop, it does this. It does that. Fill rect. There's a what? Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I thought I was going crazy. Okay. Okay, now let's do this. What do you think is happening? Yeah, it keeps drawing on top of itself. Look, you come here, loop, you draw a rectangle, this rectangle, then you request the animation frame. After a while, you call loop again, draw a rectangle, request the animation frame, wait, it calls loop again, you draw again, and it keeps doing this. It draws, waits, draws, waits, draws, waits. With me? So let's change something about it. So in addition to draw, Points dot x b point dot x plus five, and let's call update. Whee! Whee! Let's do it again. Whee! Now, what is happening? By the way, how can I make it go faster? Wee! <laughs> Wee! Okay, how can I make it go slower? <laughs> okay, so it's making sense to you. So before we move on, wait, before we move on, I want to make sure this is clear to you. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Look, we have a function called loop. We call this function, the function draws and updates the data. Then does a request animation frame passing in itself. The request animation frame will call the function later. It gets called again, it draws, updates data, requests again, waits. Gets called again, draws, updates data, waits, does it again, go. Okay, now in addition to changing x, let's also change the y. What do you think is going to happen? Ooh. Fancy. Okay, now, Jess, how much does it like? How much does it wait? Oh, how much does it wait? Okay, so you, the question was, how long does the request animation frame wait before it calls you? So generally speaking, it's 60 frames per second. So generally speaking, you're going to get called 60 times every second. But 
this is, it's not always true because your code might take longer than that. So there are other limitations that might lower the frame rate. Can you set the frame rate? I don't think so. Um, change frame rate in Chrome. No. You can know how, what the frame per second is, it seems, but you, I don't think you can change it. Does it have to do with It's the code in the browser, not you. The browser is what is executing the frames. Yeah? Um, okay, wait, guys. I want to make sure you understand this code because we're going to build on it a lot. So just make sure you understand this. You have this function that then calls draw, calls update, requests animation frame, which then calls it again, draws updates, requests, call, draws up, and it keeps looping. Is that part clear? Yes? Okay, talk. That's fine. Update data is the part that changes the data. Draw is the part that updates the actual rendering. It's the part that basically takes the data and puts it on the screen. Fair? Game development is generally has this pattern. You have a draw and an update. You change the data, you draw the data. You change the data, you draw the data. And you keep doing this. Keep going? OK. I, now, how do I make it so that it's not the straight line? I just want the box to go. Right. So at the top of my draw, let me erase the previous frame. So context, clear, rect, zero, zero, canvas.width, canvas.height. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Now, look what happens. Wait. Actually, let's only change the X. Wait, wait, wait. Watch, 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 watch. Uh-huh. 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 Right, we don't have a stop. Okay, let me make this a little bit smaller. Let me make this 300. Yeah, okay. Right, so it, the canvas ends here. Each got a, uh, what can I do? I wanted to stop, either stop or I got a better one. Make it bounce and come back. We need an if condition. Beautiful. Okay, so when we update, notice how we keep adding a, a one. What do we have to do so it goes back this way? Minus a one. Good. Okay. So how do I do that? Okay. Tell me. If Nice. Greater than or equal to car down the road. If okay, so he's right. If this will only work if you do it one at a time. Why don't we do it as long as it's if it's greater than or equal to? Right? Because what happens if you jump five? Then you miss. You understand? Okay. So when that happens, what should I do? Change the direction. How do I change the direction? Okay, let's do that. Point of x is equal to point dot x minus one. Like that? Yeah, this is what. Okay. Else. You guys think this will work? No. It will go. When it gets to the end, it will see that it's at the end and it will go back one. Next one, it's going to go back. So it's going to go. Look. Look. 
Well played, well played. Give me another one. Give me a better solution. Can you tell Okay. Um, add a Boolean parameter. Okay, so why don't we set a direction to this? Have it be one. One being positive, right? One going that way. And instead of one, why don't we add point dot dir? Or instead of dir, why don't we be all math like and do call it delta? Ooh, delta. And since we have x and y, let's call it x delta. Just to sound like we're smart. Okay. X delta. X delta. Okay. So, question. What we want to do when we get to the end is you want to flip the delta. Right? So, how do we flip the delta? Well, when we get to the end, we want the delta to be negative 1. Wait, like that. But, okay, let's do this. Like that? Wait, okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm not going to touch it now. Okay, so it bounces. Nice, nice, nice. Aww. Help me. Okay, let's do the simple way and then we'll do it the cool way. Okay, else if, now you want to check this other side, this wall. How do we know when the box is here? Huh? If what? If point dot x is what? Less than or equal to zero. Exactly. In that case, we want to make sure that point delta is one. Now let's see. Okay, good. Okay, good. Sure. Okay, so the point, uh, okay, the point has a delta. The delta is the change, right? Delta means change, yes? Okay. So the point has a delta. This delta is what we add to x, so it moves. Actually, yeah, it moves this way, right? So we keep adding 1, so it moves this way. When we get here, we want it to go this way. Oh, we want to keep adding negative 1. Until it gets there, then we want to flip it and come, keep adding positive 1, right? So if you think about it, we'll just keep adding delta. But the value of delta changes from being 1 to go this way to being negative 1 to go that way. Ah. Imagine if instead of uh, changing it by 1, we changed it by 5. Now it's possible that it could go past it. You're right. If it starts at 0, you're OK. But if the, actually at 300, it's divisible by 5. But imagine if the canvas width was 394. Then the 5 would go past it, and you would lose it. Understand? OK. So we Ah, interesting. Look what he's saying. He's saying, why don't we, when it goes right, when it goes this way, have it go fast, but when it goes back, let it go slow. So let's have it minus one. So, oh. Now here's a fun one. I got oh, go ahead, go ahead. Bad. 
Huh? This is why it is why it is an infinite loop. Yeah. I see. Okay. So uh, this request animation frame is what allows this to happen. Request animation frame basically calls your function later. What that means is that the previous call gets removed from the stack. Remember how I told you every time you call a function, it adds the memory to the stack? When you call request animation frame, it does not add it to the stack. And so it can keep working. Jokes? Other questions? Now, I got one for you. I want this, bo this box. Jesus, why am I yelling? Okay, I want this box. I'm just very excited. To begin from, not from the top, but slightly down. So I want it to begin here. Uh, so instead of zero, let's have it begin at 40. And you know what? Have it begin at, have the Y be 50. Good, so it starts randomly in this area. I want it to go diagonally. Let's start with down. Right and down. How do I do that? Okay, you're right. So I have to increase the y. So let me do point dot y equals point dot y plus. What do I need? Okay, so now it keeps going down. Cool, 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 cool. Aww. What happened? Wait, let, let, me, let me add some style to my canvas so you can see where, where it is. Uh, so, style. Hash canvas. And let's give it a border of solid one pixel red. Okay, look, it's going, it's going, it's going, and ah, uh, oh, did you see? Oh, hey, that was cool, what was that? Okay, let's have this be uh, five and five here as well. Look, 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 it goes, it hits the wall, and then it goes this way. And then, it, yeah, why is it faster? It's five and five. Anyway. But so the problem here is that it, when it hits the Y, it keeps going, right? It just keeps going. So what can I do? Huh? Okay, he's saying use X delta here. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I wonder why it's so slow at the beginning. Oh, I know why, because the deltas begin with five, sorry, that's why, sorry, okay. Is that the behavior we want? No, that's not, if you throw a ball against a wall, it doesn't, it bum bum bum, right? Okay. You hit the wall, you hit the ground, you go up. So how do I get that? Why don't we have the, the delta from x be different from delta from of y? Why doesn't the y travel at 3? Three. Three, yeah. Oh, but we're still using the, the x delta for your recommendation. So let's go back to y delta. Uh -huh. So here, this was fine until we got to here, and then it disappeared, right? Good. Oh, that's the problem. This is the problem. So what do we need to do? What are we trying to do? If the ball hits the ground, what should it do? <coughs> Go back up. Reverse. So, what do I have to do? Same thing for Y. Beautiful. Whee! Wow, this is cool. Overwork? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, nice. 
Okay. It's almost working because it's almost perfect square. That's okay. So hey, that's cool. Oh shoot, it's 250. Uh, let's take a photo. <laughs> All right, good. Thank you.